Hello, everyone. Gary Russo here with Blast Motion Baseball. I am the Eastern Regional Sales Manager on our amateur baseball team. Joined by four great guests today, we have Cody Wheeler with Canes Baseball, Christian Helsel with US Elite, Spiker Helms with the Rawlings Tigers, and Tony Gillio with Slammers North. Obviously, with everything going on with COVID-19, I know I speak for everyone at Blast when I say that if there's anything we can do for you guys uh, during these times, don't hesitate to reach out to any of us. Obviously, the world's uh, in a crazy place right now, and we're all dealing with lost seasons and drastic changes to our quote-unquote normal spring schedule. Um, and so we really just want to use today to provide you guys with as much information as possible on how you can use BLAST effectively to stay engaged with your athletes uh, during these times. Uh, we have an extremely impressive panel today, as I mentioned. Uh, we have Spiker Helms, the Rolling Tigers, Tony Gillio, Slammers North, Christian Helsel, US Elite, and Cody Wheeler with the Canes. Um, before I let these guys introduce themselves, I'll let them go around the, uh, the panel here and introduce themselves. Uh, I'll start. I played baseball at Miami of Ohio, graduated in 2016, and have been with Blast Baseball for a little over a year now. And as I mentioned, I'm the Eastern Regional Sales Manager. So um, starting with Cody, do you want to just kick us off in just a short introduction on yourself and the organization and your current role? Yeah, yeah. Um, I went to uh, Coastal Carolina for three years, uh, got drafted um, by the Diamondbacks in 2010, uh, played six years in pro ball, um, got close, didn't quite get there. Um, Flipped to the other side, um, kind of came back home, got involved with the Canes, um, and now I am the director of player development for the Canes. Awesome. Thank you, Cody. Tony? Uh, Tony Gileo with uh, Slammers North Baseball, uh, the North facility out of uh, Brookfield, Colorado, and the South facility we also have down in, in Denver. I played uh, at Eastern Illinois a long time ago um, and played independent ball for about six or seven seconds. Um, but uh, at Slammers North, we're surrounded by some awesome people there, and uh, we have uh, 17 youth teams out of the North and eight high school teams that we're working with, but predominantly uh, 17 youth teams and five softball teams with uh, Blast. Awesome. Thank you, Tony. Spiker? Um, first off, this is an awesome panel. I mean, experts like crazy, uh, as I see across my screen. Um, my name is Spiker Helms, played at Missouri State, uh, played independent baseball, um, and then and now I'm a national director for the Rawlings Tigers. I help with the programming, and I've also helped with the technology implementation in our organization. Awesome. Thank you, Spiker. Fellow St. Louis guy. Uh, Christian? Yeah, it's Christian Helsel with baseball. I played at Ole Miss out of high school, transferred to Penn State, played three years at Penn State, and then two years at Indy Ball. Uh, last summer, transitioned from a player into coaching and uh, and uh, as our na national director of player development with U.S. League Baseball. And I'm kind of our our guy that's explaining blast and, and helping our organization implement it uh, to the best of our ability and making sure everybody's on the same page developmentally and, uh, and, and recruiting-wise. So I appreciate you having me on here. Absolutely. And thank you to each of you guys for, for joining us today. I'm, I'm looking forward to it and it's, it's going to be fun. And I know there's going to be a lot of helpful information for everybody out there. Uh, before we jump in, just a reminder to uh, submit your questions uh, inside the webinar and we will get to those questions. Uh, if you use that question prompt there, we will get to those questions uh, after the webinar concludes via email. So at any point throughout this webinar, just a uh, just a reminder to submit your questions and we will get to them. I know you probably have some come up as we're, as we're talking here. So we will make sure we answer those at the end of the webinar. And I will also ask some questions uh, at the end for our guests. So uh, just wanted to make sure we're getting to your questions uh, as we know they will come up. Uh, as you can see today's agenda, our topics for discussion, we're gonna be talking about getting started with online training, uh, the player accountability and tracking within Blast Connect, uh, team reports, uh, competitions, you know, how to create that competitive environment outside the facility or away from the field uh, when all your athletes are, are kind of grounded at home right now, and then getting everyone involved, again, outside those traditional walls and, and how you create that atmosphere uh, in a virtual training environment or a remote training environment. So, again, we have a great group of guests today. Really excited to dive in. And uh, leading off for us is uh, Cody Wheeler with Canes Baseball. 
Yeah, yeah, great. Thanks, Gary. Um, so basically, we kind of got involved with Blast um, at the beginning of November. Um, we really kind of saw the change in the way things are going, just like I'm sure you guys did. You guys were a little earlier to the party than we were um, in that respect. But really just kind of seeing to where the game has changed coming from an old school kind of train of thought. I know I'm probably one of the younger guys on here, but, um, you know, I was taught old school, you know, vision and, you know, seeing adjustments and feeling adjustments. Well, now we have that data to back all that up. And so basically we got partnered with with Blast because we kind of saw where the where the trend was going and we wanted to be able to offer more to the kids. Um, we want to be able to offer a little bit more in between the weekends that we only see them. You know, it's a, it's a weekend here, it's a weekend there, it's five days and whatnot. So we want to be able to offer some midweek adjustments to something to give these kids to go back and work on. And really, that's one of the reasons why we, we started with Blast. Um, part of the issue, part, part of the reason that I um, my job was created is to create more development throughout the summer and really using Blast. To, to enhance that to where I have live data week in and week out. Now I can actually use that and help this kid. And I don't necessarily have to see him swing 400 times. Videos are great, but the data does, does tell it all. Um, so going on that, I believe that getting started, one, just ask questions, right? Like I've, I've, pick people's brains that, you know, um, I've heard have been involved, um, especially you, Gary, and, and Jeff McGarry over there, over there at Blast, um, seeing you guys at ABCA uh, was really helpful. Um, just ask questions, because for me personally, I don't know about you guys, when you started, um, it was a little nerve wracking coming from all of this normal old school thoughts, all this data driven charts, spray charts, angles, you know, and stuff like that. So I would say just ask questions um, and really try to get informed. Um, and that's kind of the cool thing about the baseball world. As we all know, you know, we like to talk, you know, it, it's not a, it's not a, hey, I got something cool. I'm going to keep it in my back pocket kind of thing. Um, we're going to sit there and we're going to spread information because at the end of the day, it's not just about helping, you know, the slammers or the tigers. And of course, you know, that's all individual stuff, but we're just trying to get kids to the next level. Yeah, I love that uh, you mentioned the support within the baseball community, and uh, we've seen it across all of our partners, not just you guys today, but um, the willingness to share information and, and help each other when it comes to, you know, implementing this technology to improve your development. Uh, Cody, you mentioned that, you know, you guys started in November. Traditionally, the Canes have a lot of teams across the country, so you're not necessarily in one central location. Um, can you talk a little bit about that experience with having guys all across the country? Uh, and kind of monitoring um, those swings? Yeah, logistically, it's been a little bit difficult. Um, regionally speaking, we go from Maryland to South Carolina, and we that covers about 20, 26 teams, I believe, um, give or take a team here and there. But then we have our national and our American teams, and those kids are, you know, spread out from New York to Florida to California. Um, so trying to get them – to one, trying to get the inclusiveness to where these kids actually set it up, you know, is difficult enough, as I'm sure some of you guys have dealt with, just making sure that people set it up correctly and know how to use, utilize the tool correctly. Um, but I think just being clear and cut in communication and trying to stay on top of communication, you know, don't let it go and be a week before we're trying to reach out and get some of these kids, because like you guys know, I'm sure you kind of lose them at that point. You know, it's just like, oh, well, it's, it's in the back thought now. You know, I got it a week ago. It was cool. But now, you know, now I'm done. Makes perfect sense. Yeah, I appreciate you sharing that. Um, and I guess from the you know standpoint of just getting started, uh, can you just talk about the process of how you guys really rolled this out just from getting sensors to everybody and getting everybody signed up? Yeah, absolutely. So what we did is it's really nice with the blast, uh, blast motion. You can do a social share. Um, once you get your, your academy set up, you, you have a nice little URL that you can copy and paste into an email, and it allows people to to literally just click and, and, and apply, and then all of a sudden, you're actually in the um, in the Canes Academy. So that was a very nice, easy tool. Um, once inside, for organizational purposes, um, you can then go in and roster your kids. And, and that was really helpful for different coaches in our different areas. You know, I have a guy who's, 
you know, in South Carolina, but he doesn't need to see, you know, our North Carolina and our Virginia teams. He just needs to be able to see those guys. So to have them rostered in there was really just kind of help us to streamline and really get efficient with information and getting it out to these coaches and these different coordinators from North to South. Awesome. Yeah, it makes sense. And is every kid getting his own sensor with you guys? Yes. Yes. So we, um, we got individual sensors and profiles for everybody. Um, and we have been shipping those out since November. We're just about done. We've got a few stragglers coming in here and there. Um, but yeah, we've been shipping those out. Um, I would say we're probably close to, we're a little bit over 300 right now from November to now. So, um, it was definitely a crazy little process to start, but as you kind of get the hang of things, you get more comfortable like with anything. So um, having having that many players getting involved, um, having these nice little ins and outs inside the Blast Connect is, is really helpful. Sure. Awesome. Well, we're, yeah, we're excited to work with an organization like the Canes, and I'm sure everyone in this webinar knows who you guys are, and hope you guys continue to do, continue to do great things. And uh, looking forward to when you guys are able to get back out on the field and, and know this training you guys have been doing uh, remotely will will pay off. Uh, so thank you, Cody, again, for, for joining us today. And I really appreciate you having you here. And thanks for all the information you shared. Uh, moving moving on uh, to Tony Gillio, the Director of Player Development with the Slammers North. Tony, talk to us. All right. Thanks, Gary. So, you know, before we started releasing these out, we, we really just sat down in a meeting with uh, – you know, all our main instructors, Billy Martin, who you guys may know, played uh, played in Japan, played AAA, uh, played for a long time. Greg Golson, who played at the major league level with the Yankees and the Phillies, uh, had the World Series ring. Um, Kevin Russo, who also played at the major league level with, with the Yankees. And uh, even Nicole Tromboli, softball, a uh, professional softball player. So we really all just sat in the room and talked about how we wanted to implement it and what we wanted to get out of it. And for us, there was really one common denominator that that came out of that conversation, which was, you know, the he or she who swings the most swings the best. That when we went back in our youth, we all had we all had something or somewhere to go to just simply swing. You know, my my example was going to Grand Slam USA in Palatine, Illinois. You know, my dad would buy a, a thousand tokens. Um, when you buy a thousand tokens, you get a thousand free, and every token got me 17 swings off the machine. So, so I knew without a doubt that every single year I swung the bat 34,000 times, you know, not including what we did in the backyard or or anywhere else. And and every story, you know, Billy had a story that was very similar to that. So did Greg, and so did Kevin, and so did Nicole. And so that's really been our motivation is, you know, what what can we do to to keep and to grow these these uh, athletes, you know, grow their athleticism. You know, we didn't want to do anything to squash their athleticism. We wanted uh, to enhance it, to keep it, and to grow it. And, you know, we're we're working with all 10 to 14-year-olds. And so our our youth program that we have blast centers with is from 10 to 14, and then we have five softball teams. So we were really looking at the long game. You know, there's no quick fix. You know, we were really um, – you know, our goal is to get them to the high school level and to our high school program, and obviously, just like everyone else, get them into a college program. And so understanding that we're changing movement patterns and, you know, success is in a straight line, we know that we had years with these with these kids and not just something that we were trying to change within a week or two. So, you know, we do a lot with, uh, you know, really just getting their bodies to move fast, you know, getting their bodies to self-regulate, uh, having a lot of adjustability. You know, we I think everyone uses that term train ugly. And for us, you know, 10, 15, 20 years ago, that meant going out in the backyard and just playing games and, you know, uh, batting lefty and emulating your favorite player who batted lefty and your favorite players who batted righty. And, and we, we did all that stuff naturally where kids just don't do that nowadays. And so you know, our training environment is in essence replicating just what we used to do back then and, and training ugly and putting them into various different um, scenarios to make the game difficult you know we want it we want them to, to chase failure and to seek failure um, and uh, you know embrace that we want them to fail in our environment so that way you know the, the game gets easier outside when they when they do go outside we're, we're in a cold weather, cold weather climate obviously 
So our philosophy has always been talk less and, and swing more. And, uh, and we, we use this example of, uh, you know, he who swings the most swings the best. Um, our, uh, the, the example that we give all the time is, is one of like the dentist, right? You, you know, or at least you should be going to the dentist every six months and there's 180 days in between there. And so you should be swinging or should be, uh, brushing your teeth twice a day, every day for 180 days. Everyone knows that. That's, that's common knowledge. What you, what you don't do is wake up one day and go, oh crap, I just forgot to brush my teeth. And so I'm going to go, go and cram it out and brush my teeth 360 times before I go to the dentist that day. Um, but we, you know, we have kids that, that think, think that way and they're going to get all their swings in in one day. So we really try to monitor it and not have them swing 500 times in one day, but to really just have that consistency of, you know, 150, you know, 100 times. If, if you don't feel well and all you want to do is swing 50 times, then, then swing 50 times. But, um, the consistency behind, you know, every single day, a little bit every day is, is more important and uh, more beneficial than cramming it all in, in in one day. So we also, uh, you know, we also try to really get out of them. This is where BLAST, I think, is, is huge, is not only tracking and measuring their swings and seeing what they're doing on a daily basis and weekly basis and monthly basis. We, you know, we, uh, we have some screenshots here of uh, the metrics that we send out. We track that. We, we post this on all our different social media outlets. We also send out emails. We, we track it by team. We track it by individual. And we, uh, and we also have some 60 inch monitors up at our facility. So that way they, you know, it just kind of rolls through in a, in a PowerPoint that they can see where they stand amongst their peers. Um, but where blast I think is also really important is, you know, swinging just the swing doesn't really matter. It doesn't really count. You know, we're, again, we're trying to make it really difficult for them in their training environment so that way the game gets easier. You know, let's make it hard for them. And so I'd say the other example that we give, you know, quite frequently is um is the Usain Bolt example. You know, the kids know who he is, right? It's the fastest man on earth. And we're pretty confident that when he went to the beaches and, you know, and, and did sprints with his buddies that he didn't he didn't say, Hey man, let's just let's go for a jog or hey, I'm gonna let you beat me this time. You know, he he knew that the fastest dude on the beach gets the chicks and so um, you know, he ran as hard as he can every single time, and uh, and we want our kids to to do the same thing. That you know, swinging with intent and creating competition and making it, uh, uh, you know, measuring your your bat speed and your hand speed and, and exit velocity is just so crucially important that you're not just going through the motions, but but literally swinging as hard as you can every single time. That you're you're trying to break records, not every week um, or every time that you walk into the facility, but literally you're trying to break a record every time that you swing the bat. And if you do that and you have that mentality, then, you know, going back to that long game that, you know, years from now, we know that the kids who swing the most and swing the hardest and work the hardest are going to be successful and have some pretty incredible careers. Awesome. Appreciate you sharing that, Tony. I think I've gathered from what you're saying that you guys swing uh, a lot. Uh, do you want to move into now these, these team reports? Yeah, so here's a this is a good example of uh, you know, two of our 13U teams. These are, you know, I'd say arguably the top two 13U teams in the state of Colorado. Uh, we probably have one team in the South that might argue that as well. But uh, you can see here by their swing counts, you know, every basically every single kid on the team is swinging a thousand times or more, some two and three and four and four thousand times within a month. Um, you know, I have to say the other thing that we say all the time is success leaves clues. You know, if you want to be successful, you should do what other successful people do. Say that in business, say that in life, say that in baseball. And so, you know, going and just watching other people and, and seeing what they do. And, and if they're successful, then, you know, you should probably listen, pay attention, and do what they do. And so we say that a lot. These kids know that. And, you know, having two quality, you know, high-level teams like this that can go compete on a national stage, um, is great and they, they're they're setting a good example for the other teams that are in the program for us we let everyone know that you know we let everyone know you know who these kids are and, and who these teams are and obviously when they're winning tournaments going down to georgia or florida and and uh you know maybe not winning them but but showing and representing colorado really well then uh, it, that stands out and people want to come and play for us because of that 
Yeah, I bet. I bet. And so moving into kind of the development aspect of, uh, you know, you mentioned training with intent. Um, moving into the development aspect, um, what does that look like for you guys from a swing standpoint when you actually break down a hitter's swing? Yeah, so this swing profile is, is fantastic. I was actually on the uh, softball webinar last week and saw this, and, and they probably said, like everyone else who watches this, is going to be like, man, how do I get my hands on this? And I've been using it, kind of been uh, addicted to it ever since I did this. This is my this is actually my son's metrics here for a session that we did. I, I did it for my daughter, and then uh, I had a coach you know, reach out to me last night and say, hey, you know, since he, you know, my son's been at home working by himself. He, his uh, metrics have sort of fallen off the wagon here. Can you help me out? And so I did this swing profile for him in, as a December and a, and a March comparison and kind of just went through where he where he has uh, improved, but also where he needs improvement and uh, and then assign some some drills to to make those uh, those changes. Um, you know, our view is a little bit like, you know, we – as instructors, we think like doctors that, you know, our job isn't to put the pill in their mouth. You know, our job, or, and in the same from a baseball standpoint, our job isn't to put that ball on a tee. Our job is to, you know, identify uh, what the problem is, um, prescribe the medicine to them. You know, in, in our world, it's prescribing a drill for them. And then it's really their job to, to do that drill over and over and over again. You know, if, if you go to the doctor and you don't take the medicine, or you don't listen to the doctor, or you don't, uh, you know, eat better, or you don't exercise, you're not, you're not going to get healthier. And so, in a baseball standpoint, we think that same way. Of here's, here's what we know from a data standpoint, or visually, or from our experience, um, what we feel like could be approved upon. Here's the drill or drills that we really think are going to help you. And then at that point, it's really your job to do those daily you know over and over and over again uh in order to make those changes and so we prescribe drills for them we send out emails every single week especially you know in this time right now we hadn't been able to see them you know we were swinging 140,000 times 130,000 times a month uh, oh, oh you guys had that for me that's great so it's not bad right uh you know we haven't they don't have access to the facility they haven't been they haven't had any access to it. They haven't had access to instructors. They haven't been getting their, their lessons or the one-on-ones. And we're still probably, what, within uh, 20% of our, our our monthly high. So we've I think we've done a good job of setting the tone as to what it takes in order to succeed. And, and kudos to them, you know, to them individually as athletes, their parents, and their coaches for making sure they're still getting their work in. Yeah, that's awesome. Over 100,000 swings. That's that's extremely impressive, especially with, during times like these, which kind of leads me to this question. How are most of your athletes getting all these swings in still uh, without being able to access the facility, as you just mentioned? So, uh, you know, a lot like, like Cody said, when, when we uh, rolled this out, we had meetings uh, to introduce BLAST and, and talk to the parents and talk to the athletes and we got them all in a room and, and did maybe eight or nine different presentations. And, uh, you know, one of the things that we said of, Hey, if you want to be successful in the sport, you have to, I think it's the old John Wooden quote, right? You have to work just as hard when no one's watching. And so if you only swing when you're with me, if I'm your instructor, if you're only swing when you, uh, you're at our circuit training at our facility, then you're really not going to get that much better. So, you know, we, we, we didn't make it mandatory, but we just said, hey, this is this is what success looks like, right? I mean, success is clues. So successful uh, athletes, baseball players, and, and, and kids, they have a, a tanner tee and a bonnet. You know, you have a tanner tee, a bonnet, baseball at a minimum. Uh, you know, we really push weighted balls. We do a lot with weighted bats and weighted balls. And, and if you want to get better, you have to work just as hard when no one's watching. Awesome. And I'm assuming your guys are pretty good at making sure their sensors are charged and on the bat if you guys are logging this many swings. <laughs> uh, yeah, you'll, you'll be surprised. Uh, it's it's funny, but yeah, there's uh, there's and Cody said this too. There's uh, a little bit of maintenance that you have to do as the development guy to make sure that they're set up correctly. They have the same you know the correct email and the email tied to us. 
little things like that. But, you know, you're troubleshooting little things here and there, but um, you can see overall we don't really have a problem with that, um, and we we resolve their issues pretty quickly. It's there is a learning curve, but once you get the hang of it, it's it is a, an awesome tool to help you um, be a better coach, be a better instructor, and and communication. The communication is fantastic. I just I text one of my uh, athletes the other day, just said, hey, is there you know some is everything okay? Normally she's swinging a ton every single day, and I haven't seen it lately, and just checking up on her to make sure everything's okay. So, or to the opposite of, hey, you really don't need to swing a thousand times in one day. It's too much. <laughs> it's a little over video games. <laughs> right, right. Awesome. Yeah, and, and just last question um, before we move to Spiker. Um, how are you kind of going about um, using Blast in today's environment? I mean, how often are you accessing Blast Connect? How often are you looking at the information? Um, you know, what does your day to day look like right now uh, with all of these guys at home uh, and, and kind of using Blast at the same time? And now it's a bit more, you know, like right now at the end of March, I'll go in and, and send out a, a team report to every single team. So I'll do that for, for 22 teams. And then, you know, going back to that swing profile, it, that's new to me, new to our program, I mean, new to Blast too. So I'll send that out. To every uh, athlete that we, you know, one of our instructors work with. So I'll make sure that our instructor has that, the parent and the coach has it, and the athlete has it. But then I'll also, as a reward, just for those kids that, that swing um, frequently, you know, that if they swung a thousand times or more in the month of March, then I'll do that report for them, uh, you know, just as a gesture for it. So that's the way I'm doing it right now. And, you know, again, rewarding the behavior of he who swings the most swings above. Love it. Thanks so much, Tony. It's just super, super valuable. And I know you guys are going to keep, keep swinging. Um, get over 111,000 in April. That's the challenge for the Slammers. And uh, oh, no appreciate your time. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, we have Spiker Helms with the Rollings Tigers, Spiker's home base. He's in St. Louis, Missouri, where I grew up. I actually grew up training in the facility uh, where Spiker works out of and uh, get to see firsthand all the cool stuff going on over there. So, Spiker, uh, turning it over to you, and, and thanks again for joining us. Yeah, thank you again. Um, the, our process with Blast Motion was um, actually a slow one. So I remember having conversations with you, Gary, um, coming into the facility, and then Jeff coming in, flying in, and um, talking to us. And we were trying to figure out how do we actually implement this um, at scale. And that was our biggest worry because we didn't just want to get sensors and then have one, two sensors for a couple of players. Um, so we wanted to do it at scale. And when looking at it, um, we finally, something clicked. I, I, don't, I don't remember the day, but it clicked. And I was like, we need to get this. And um, our GM and our owner, um, they were all in on it. And we talked to our coaches and then we made the um, executive decision to go in on blast motion. And our main goal was competition. Um, human beings are tri tribe and community based, but they're also competitive beings. And we wanted to go towards that. We wanted to, we wanted to take our, our training and just not be training. We wanted to be all about competition and try to and try to grow through competition. And it was very interesting. Was the first couple of weeks, guys were a little little kind of skeptical of the sensor um, because they didn't know what they were looking at. It was a language barrier. They didn't know what the metrics meant, and they just knew that there was this white little thing on the end of their bat. And they said, you know what? Um, I I don't know what this is all about. But then once we sent out the leaderboards for the first week. In the second week, that's when everything changed. Everyone started figuring out, okay, what does this metric mean? What does this metric mean? I got so many questions um, in my email inbox, um, DMs and, and Instagram. Um, I'm on Twitter too, so I was getting DMs on Twitter from our players, even our alumni. Um, alumni that were using it at different schools, they were asking me questions about it um, and what my thoughts were. And it was a really interesting um, take on it. And our leaderboard started growing. At first, I just sent out the numbers. And then I started developing an actual template um, that was sent out uh, via email, um, a link to our VIP site where a lot of our players are able to gather information, um, whether that's training or um, video or um, just basic information on their team. So as you can see, um, 
we have the uh, week four leaders. This is from November. Uh, but I had to start explaining the leaderboard and what things meant and how you could get onto the leaderboard. And then also um, I had to explain the metrics because I got a lot of questions. So try to eliminate that communication barrier so that guys knew what they were going after. Um, I, I basically took the verbiage from Blast and then I ended up inserting it into this template right here. And what a lot of guys were doing is they were actually talking to each other. Hey, how are you fixing your rotational acceleration? How are you um, fixing your peak hand speed number? What is rotation and peak hand speed? Like those, those conversations were actually happening. It wasn't us teaching it. Um, we were teaching it kind of drill sets, but guys were actually teaching themselves because they got curious and curiosity is a huge thing for us. And it really helps with that competitive nature. So as you can see, um, we're, we're exactly like Tony, where swing totals is a, is a big number for us, just because if you swing more, um, you're gonna get better. Uh, we, this is all through our training and then also outside of training. So as you can see, they have the king icon. And then as they scroll down, um, they'll, they'll get into bat speed, um, average power. And then I, I note, those king icons and flags to note that, hey, those guys are swinging a lot and they're on other leaderboards as well. Um, like this, like Charlie Berry. Charlie Berry just like absolutely crushed um, during the training and was literally at one point he was on, he was number one on every single board, which was unbelievable. And um, just from a facility standpoint, it brought more people into the cages, which was awesome. Um, cause after training, most kids would just leave and get in their car and then go home and then do their homework and then just repeat the next day. What we saw was that, um, a lot of guys were coming earlier and they were staying later just because they wanted to be on that leaderboard and see their name on social media, um, or into the VIP section. Awesome. Yeah. Those leaderboards are are phenomenal and get to see those on my Twitter timeline all the time and see all the swings you guys are doing um, and really appreciate you walking us through um, the annotations and uh, everything else you're doing with those leaderboards and uh, it's been really fun to follow you guys um, and, and see the see the expansion uh, taking place from a remote side you know given uh, assuming the facility's closed how are you guys uh, tracking things right now? How are you doing things right now? Um, you know, with guys at home. You know, it's been, it's been interesting because we don't have anything formal. So there's nothing formal that we're doing, but what I am seeing is there's a lot of conversations happening with us. So like the other night I had a conversation with one of our youth coaches and he sent me a text. He's like, Hey, I'm, I'm looking at the vertical bat angle and plane efficiency um, on, on my guys. What, what should I recommend to them? And so conversations are being had through text message. That's why it's so awesome with Blast. Cause like I'm not in a facility and I can still make recommendations to our players um, via through our youth coaches or our high school coaches. So um, we don't have necessarily anything formal um, because it's so hard because guys don't have cages in their basements or they don't have um, access to parks because um, a lot of the parks here in St. Louis are shut down. So um, it's, we didn't do anything formal, but we are getting the conversation started through text and video. And um, I mean, I had a parent email me two weeks ago. Um, he's up in Michigan and they, they got shut down. So he was asking me to review his um, kids swing. So. Awesome. Yeah. It's probably hard to just have a concrete game plan, but the fact that you're still able to have those conversations and there's still kids out there swinging, um, it is awesome. And are most of your guys that are able to get swings in still on blast? Is it, as, as Tony mentioned, uh, a, a net and a tee? Yeah, it's, it's a literally net and tee. Um, I mean, that's literally all they can do. And I mean, how do you, how do you expect a virus to hit and you have a formal plan on it? It's just, it's just, it's just tough. You just kind of roll with the punches. I, mean, I think everyone's doing the same thing. I mean, if you look at other industries, they're kind of rolling with the punches and just trying to, trying to help out people as much as they can. I mean, look at this. We're we're on a webinar right now with um, leading experts um, in the baseball field. Yeah, it's it's been it's been crazy for us as well. I'm sure it's been it's been uh, 
crazy for all you guys. Um, and um, how would you recommend guys, you know, training at home um, for those out there? Like, how would you recommend, you know, those guys still getting their work in? Or how are you guys recommending it to your athletes? No, it, it's a lot of video based. So um, if you have uh, an instructor, uh, just kind of speaking in general, if you have an instructor that you trust um, and you have access to blast motion, which um, it can categorize your swings and then you can get on blast connect and then send over certain swings and then they can do a video analysis on it. Um, I would go to that instructor and be like, Hey, can you please just take a look at the swing? I want to make sure that he's on track. Um, one of my players did that um, through Facebook Messenger, um, and he asked me, like, hey, are my numbers good? I'm like, yeah, your numbers look great. Just keep keep swinging. If you want to send me a video, um, go for it. I'll I'll spend five minutes um, and, and look it over, and then if I see something, I'll, I'll make a recommendation. So I think that's the biggest thing. Use your network. If you have a network and you have a strong network, access that network. Great advice. You guys are killing it, Spiker. I really appreciate it this information super helpful um, I know I found it very valuable and and excited to see uh, you guys continue to own the own the leaderboards with flash so thank you so much we really appreciate the time thank you <laughs> all right moving on to Christian Helsel fun fact former teammate of mine in Battle Creek Michigan in the Northwoods League uh, roommate as he mentioned roommate yeah roommate <laughs> Um, Christian's the director of player development for U.S. Elite and uh, one of our one of our top partners. And I'll let you take it from here, Christian. Thanks for joining us. Yeah. Well, oh, real hey, quick again, before you go, Christian. A, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, just a reminder: get your questions in uh, in the webinar. I'm asking questions. Yours are probably better than mine. Make sure you log those questions in in the webinar. We'll get to them. I promise. Uh, I know you guys probably have your own questions. Just want to make sure I remind you guys uh, to do that, and we will make sure we get that to you. Sorry, Christian. Didn't mean to cut you off. Go ahead. Hey, no, yeah, no worries. Please get your questions in. Um, well, first off, thanks so much for having me on. This has been amazing so far. I've been chomping at the bit to be able to get the top of it here, but these guys have had some outstanding insight into how they're using Blast, so it's really, really cool. Um, but, you know, fall 2018 is when we started talking to you, Gary, about Blast. And, uh, you know, it, it took a little bit of time for us to really – uh, decide whether or not we wanted to go this route, but but it quickly became an easy decision for us. You know, it, it was it was really easy for for to see how viable this data is and and how it's becoming so a major player in in the baseball in, industry as far as development goes and goes. <clears throat> so we want to get our kids hands on this because if they're going to be using this when they get to college, or they're going to be scouted on this professionally based on this data we want them to be familiar with it so um it, it you know it, it became an easy decision for us really really quickly we ended up uh rolling it out right at the end of uh 20 or excuse me it was fall 2019 when we started talking and then uh we started rolling it out at the end of 2019 and really started using it here at the beginning of of 20 and at us elite we, we kind of have a four-pronged approach to development there's the evaluation aspect, you know, find out where, where these kids stand, where they are right now. Then there's the education aspect, teach them what it's going to take for them to, to, to improve upon where they are right now. Implement, implementation, how are they going to implement this, this information into their training and, 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 and their development and then accountability, which was the major thing. Um, Blast checks off all four of those, those things for us. Evaluation, education, implementation, accountability. And accountability for us was the major one because uh, our MO has always been rolling. We've never had really local teams that are practicing together. We've never had a facility. Our kids are spread out. So how do we keep getting them information? How do we make sure they're getting their work done? Because what we've done in the past is we've given them what we call an IDP, Individual Development Plan. At the end of the year, we, we, we tell them where they stand. You say you want to play at this school, you want to play in a power five conference, this is where you're lacking, this is where you need to improve. Now, it's been their job to go home and execute that plan. We didn't really have much of a hands-on approach to their, their at-home development. And luckily, we, we've had amazing kids and amazing coaches throughout uh, our history at, at, at US Elite. So we've had success with that type of, uh, we'll say, freedom that we give those kids. 
But as we have kind of grown, we really wanted to have a more hands-on approach to their development. Blast has given us that opportunity from the hitting perspective, which has been amazing. So um, certainly every coach in the country right now with everybody being stuck at home and quarantined at home is, is asking, how can I have an impact on these kids while they're at home? Uh, and, and we don't have face-to-face -face contact. So, you know, we really needed to find a way to make this remote training fun because these kids have a decision they have to make every single day to whether or not to go jump on the Xbox and play with their buddies all day or invest time into their baseball career and, and get better because they're at home. It, it's, a, it's a tough decision. There's so many distractions, so many other things that they can do other than train, train baseball. So we've, we've kind of started implementing a few different ways um, to, to make it fun for them to work at home. Now, just like these guys, we, we have some, some competitions through blast going on. Um, and competitions are most swings, uh, and these are monthly. Most swings we do weekly and, and monthly. We have the highest efficiency. So at the ABCA, I got to sit in with some, some coaching staff from some Power 5 schools asking questions to you guys at blast. And uh, we talked a lot about on-plane efficiency and how important that is for these guys to uh, at elite levels to have success. It's a big differential. So I, I want our kids to understand that. So we're talking about on-plane efficiency a lot. We have a leaderboard for that. We have a leaderboard for rotational acceleration and then also high swing quality. So I'm taking the, the scores they get from playing connection and rotation and we're averaging those out to see who has the highest swing quality. Um, but as you can see here on this slide, that's my that's my old man here with the shirt. <laughs> um, work from home. Everybody's stuck at home, and we need to find ways for them to get it about working. Uh, you know, getting the work in at home. Uh, so we created these shirts. I, obviously, you can see hashtag Blast Motion on the back because Blast is a major player in this uh, for us. But while they're at home, um, if they you know if they post something on social media and sign up to get this shirt, then we send this to them. And it's just a kind of a motivator for them to really get excited about getting their stuff done at home. But uh, um, that, that's just some, some couple of the ways that we're, we're really getting people excited about, about being at home and, and, and still getting better. Because, you know, th at this time, uh, like I said, they have a decision to make every single day, get better or, or don't get better invest time in their baseball career or don't invest time in their baseball career. So we're, we're just trying to create ways for them to make that decision a little bit easier for them to, to invest that time. Awesome. I need one of those shirts, Christian. I work from home uh, every day. So if you could send one to me or have, have Pop send one to me, yeah. that would be great. Um, I love it. Um, just uh, real quick, that was all great stuff. Um, and, and what you guys are doing is, is really cool to see and really cool to watch and how you're staying engaged with everyone. Can you just touch on real quick the build your own tea challenge you guys did? Uh, Cause I think that, you know, is pretty cool yes. for um, everyone trying to find ways to get their guys swinging at home still. Right. So um, I'm, not all our guys have, you know, Tanner teas at home. I think that's kind of the goal of these, right? So um for the kids, the reason that we came up with this idea is because kids don't have, some kids don't have teas at home, but we want to create a kind of fun little, let's say competition uh, for our guys to be able to get their work in. So we, we, it's, we're calling it the batting tea challenge where kids are making their own batting tea um, from household, you know, uh, think common household products. So we had one kid, I mean, kids are getting really engine. I don't even know what the word is, but really smart with this. They're like engineers. Or You're something. engineers. One kid had a vacuum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> one kid had set it up so he had some laundry baskets and a vacuum that that held the 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 wiffle ball there, and he was getting swings like that. Um, but they're they're posting things on 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 social media with hashtag batting key challenge. And uh, it's really, really cool to see people having fun with this. And, and again, uh, we're, you know, we've always been remote training, but 
especially at this time we're, we're trying to create ways for kids to have fun and and people are certainly doing that and it's been really exciting for us and and uh it's it's an opportunity for us to have a, a an influence on these kids when when they have no other coaching or baseball influence um while they're while they're stuck in their houses so it's been fun for sure it's been fun to follow i've seen some of them on twitter and they are definitely uh they're definitely innovative with how they're uh, creating their own right. keys. And, and you guys continue <laughs> to uh, get after it uh, with the total swing count as well, as we see on the screen. Um, you mentioned when you were talking, this is kind of, you guys rolled this out because you are remote already. You're not around all of your teams. Um, and, and you don't touch, you know, all the players and you don't have a facility where they're all coming into. Um, can you just talk about your process for, how you work in Blast uh, remotely um, and what you're doing. I mean, it probably hasn't changed too much for you now, um, but what you're doing on a daily basis with Blast and how you're kind of monitoring all of this. Yeah, so, well, first off, let me address this 44,000 swings because I would normally be excited about that, except Slammers just kicked our teeth in as far as <laughs> the <amount of laughs> swings that we got. So I'm going to have to... Uh, I'm going to have to get on our guys about that. But uh, um, yeah, so uh, I think a, a, a big factor in this is communication, because certainly for me, as we started last, there was a there was a learning curve. I, I, it took time to understand what the what the information was telling me, how we can help kids improve based on this in, information, because, you know, uh, it's great for evaluation. It's also great for for development. But but there's a learning curve there to figure out how what we can do to help improve those numbers. So communication is is major. Um, we do have a fairly large organization with a lot of kids, so getting that information out to them is really really important. We have uh, and not to get too deep into this, but we got a, an awesome software called Diamond Software. I have the ability to communicate with all our people, mass mass groups of people. We're having webinars routinely, um, actually Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday every single every single week right now so that people are getting this information and learning because I, I think as a coach it, it's one thing um, to just tell a player to do something and they do it it's a completely other animal to help them understand why they need to do this or why this data is in for them because I'm not going to be there every single swing they take the rest of life they're going to go off to college and have a different coach that might have a different perspective than I do. If they're understanding what, what has to happen or what this data is telling them, they become their best, their own best coach, which is, I think, should be every coach's goal. Um, so that communication piece is, is crucial to, to the player's development and in their career. For sure. <clears throat> I've noticed communication being a common theme amongst everyone here and, and keeping that, um, keeping that uh, communication with the athlete and with the player during times like these. Um, last question, just Christian, just going a little deeper into that. How have mm -hmm. you been using Blast to communicate uh, remotely with these guys? Yeah, so um, I think if, uh, a big thing for us is we want these kids to take ownership of their career. And what Tony was talking about, those who swing the most um, usually hit the best, right? So, so the fact that we're keep having these leaderboards and guys are doing it as well, um, the guys that are at the top of the leaderboard are the ones that want to take the most swings. They want to be competitive. They want to to learn, right? So, um, so what we have done is we we've created a form for kids to go in, and if they want a data. Um, analysis or a video analysis, they actually fill out a, a, a request on our on our Diamonds Off software, and I get a notification of that, so I can go in and 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 do an analysis for them or or do a video analysis. So, so we're kind of making them take take ownership of 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 that. You know, I don't want to just throw information at kids that don't want the information. I want them to solicit the information solicit my help so that so that we really have a two-way um, communication going on and that that's been been awesome now we have a lot of kids that want to learn like that it's a lot of work um, getting all that analysis and and done to them but that's my job that's what I love to do so uh, uh, it, it's it's been it's been really cool for us 
<clears throat> That's awesome. Appreciate you sharing. Um, these guys are lucky to have you, Thanks, uh, you know, as a coach and as a director of player development. And um, we appreciate everything you guys do, um, both for your guys and just being a great partner with us. Um, thank, thank you guys so much. This was all super helpful. Uh, kind of wrapping up, uh, I, I'm going to remind you all one more time to submit your questions. If you have questions, please submit them um, in the prompt um, and we will get to those. Uh, but I'm going to go first again, um, selfishly, quick fire questions for you guys. Cody and Tony, I'll kind of let you both tackle this one. Um, I'm just out of respect for time. If you could keep your responses to, to 60 seconds or so um, or less, that would be great. Um, but Tony, just kind of starting with you, and then Cody, if you want to piggyback. What are you seeing from a recruiting standpoint with Blast, and kind of where do you see this going um, for your guys? I think the theme is communication. Uh, I'll, I'll steal uh, an acronym from a friend of mine, Nelson Gord, who's the director of baseball at NCSA. He uses an acronym that uh, he calls ONE. Right? ONE is uh, op your opportunity equals your network times your effort. And BLAST gives you this opportunity to send out a, a video, slow motion video, with uh, with the metrics along the side of that video to really to any and every every school that you're interested in. So your your network is is pretty uh, unbelievable nowadays with, with social media. You know, posting this on, on your social platforms, but also emailing it directly to coaches, uh, particularly going uh, before you go to a camp or even after a camp. You know, I've, I had a, a softball player go to a camp. She came after. She said, hey, I really love this school. This is where I want to go to. Can you follow up for me? And I sent them a video of her swinging with the metrics and, uh, you know, and talked a little bit about her. And they said, hey, this, is, this validates what we thought about her. You know, we, to, to give her swing data and her post-impact metrics, you know, the, the exit velocities, they said, they said wow, you know, we, we knew she could hit it hard, but this really validates it for us. And then she ended up, you know, getting a scholarship, uh, you know, not because of that, but I think that definitely helped them get, get over the hump. So, you know, sending videos beforehand and after you go to a camp, I think it, uh, it, it puts you at, at the front of, of their interest. If you're going to be, you know, we talk about the, be, you know, being a purple cow. Sorry, sorry, I'm going long-winded, but, um, you know, you're walking into a camp with 100, 200, 300 kids. You know, you want to stand out. You want to, you don't want to be like every other black cow out there, like every other kid, right? You want to stand out, and so you want to walk in that camp and and that coach say, hey, oh, you're that, you're that lefty with the cool swing, because you already sent them the video. Yeah, right. yeah, trying to appreciate it, Tony. Thank you. Yeah, just piggybacking off of what Tony was saying, I, I what we what we've been trying to do is is get as much social media content out there, trying to highlight our guys that are you know putting in the time and the effort, um, which shows initiative right off the bat. But also, as as a bunch of you know, I mean, you go to these tournaments and sometimes it just doesn't work out to where a kid gets seen when he should be, you know, there's other games going on. Other coaches have other schedules of other kids they're trying to see. Um, and just having this is really helping us and helping these kids in that process to maybe get some exposure where they might have missed it in the past. Awesome. Yeah. And I've seen some of the, the videos on Twitter, you guys are pumping out with some guys in the, with the blast metrics on the side. And um, that's been really cool to see. Thank you, Cody. Um, appreciate that. Spiker, you're the, the best marketing guy I know. And these leaderboards are awesome. Uh, they're next level. Uh, a bunch of people have always commented on that. Um, can you walk us through your process of just creating a leaderboard real quick? You don't have to divulge all your, your dark secrets, but just kind of a high level <laughs> overview of how you would go about creating that leaderboard. Yeah. Well, first off, you, you take a look at the data on Blast Connect and then you take, you export it. And then after that, you, um, figure out from one of, one of my stand, one of my criteria was you have to at least have, um, 50 plus swings. So um, I, I literally cut the bottom half that don't have 50 plus swings during that week. Um, and then I just take that data and then I start messing around with it and creating those leaderboards. Um, it's, a, it's a pretty simple process. Um, you just use uh, basic software that you have on your computer and then um, you create your template. And then after that, your template's done, which is the hardest part. And then you just insert the data. That helps. Love it. Awesome. 
Um, thank you, and thank you for the leaderboards. They're they're um, they're they're solid, and, and appreciate um, you kind of using that as a tool to get these guys working working harder and swinging more. Um, those that swing the most swing the best. According to uh, Tony, I'm gonna start stealing that if you don't mind. Um, <laughs> sure. Christian, I'll I'll finish with you. I know you're a big video guy. Uh, we we send videos to each other all the time. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about how you've been using the video analysis tool during this time within Blast Connect as as guys are sending you videos remotely? Absolutely. I mean, vid the video analysis aspect is probably one of my favorite aspects of Blast Connect because I'm able to actually put my voice over their 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 video, draw on it, compare them to a big leaguer, and uh, that to me is a lot easier to help them make adjustments and really visually see what movements they need to make. It, it's a lot easier than, than typing it out in a document uh, as far as them understanding. So it's super easy. I mean, three to five minutes and they have so much information, almost like I'm right there doing a lesson with them. So that video analysis aspect has been huge. Um, it's so simple for the player to upload a video, take a video with the Blast app. It uploads automatically so I can see it. Uh, it's a it's a no-brainer. Awesome. Yeah, I need to see one of these videos. Uh, all the content I've been seeing from you guys has been solid so far, uh, including the, the build your own tea challenge. I'll be uh, anxiously awaiting <laughs> the next invention from one of the U.S. elite players. Um, I think that pretty much wraps it up for today. Just a huge thank you to all you guys, the Canes, U.S. Elite, Rolling Tigers, and Slammers North. You guys have been great partners. Uh, Cody, Christian, Spiker, Tony, thank you so much. Really appreciate you guys taking the time. This was super fun for me just to be able to see your faces and, and chat with you as, as we're all kind of locked up at home here with everything going on uh, with the coronavirus. Um, just wanted to also mention that we have um, resources at, our, at your disposal. Um, online. You can see um, a lot of our how to train at home content, uh, some of our webinars, our drills. Um, we really just want to provide you guys information with how you can continue to coach remotely, uh, continue to train at home. We have great specials going on right now uh, in response to the virus. We've dropped pricing. So if you want to drop us a line, uh, any of us would be happy to chat and happy to walk through how we can implement this for you guys successfully. And uh, I know these guys would probably agree that uh, this is a great time to roll it out and, and continue to stay engaged and communicate with your guys, um, you know, using some baseball technology. Again, thank you so much for, for joining us. Uh, if we do not get to your questions, make sure you put those in and we will submit uh, or we will respond to them as soon as possible via email um, and be on the lookout for the next webinar. We have the ABCA crew next week. We just saw them in Nashville in January uh, for the ABCA convention. So really looking forward to sitting down with some of the ABCA members and BLAST partners in the future and just be on the lookout for those um, webinars. And it should be around the same time next week. In the meantime, hope everyone stays safe, healthy, and, and uh, enjoys the time with family. Um, and we look forward to hearing from you soon. And if we can do anything, as I mentioned at the beginning, don't hesitate to reach out to us. Even if you just want to talk some baseball, uh, we're happy to connect with you and, and just want to let everyone know we're here for you. So, Cody, Christian, Spiker, Tony, thank you guys so much. Thank yeah, you. Thanks, Thank you. Very much. Appreciate thank it. Thank you, guys. It's been a pleasure.